to Stitches and Sundries Fiber Podcast. I'm Devin. I'm Lauren. I can be found on Instagram as Devin underscore no sense. This is Dusty, by the way. That's why I was distracted during our intro, so she's climbing over my arm. <laughs> the uh, I can be found at Lauren Up Stitching on Instagram, and come hang out with us. We're yeah. talking about crafty stuff. Yeah, we're a knitting, crochet, fibery podcast. Um, and yeah, we we have a lot to show you today. Amazing. I think. I have, I have one finish and an upcoming project. I have made some progress on some other projects, but there's just not, not really anything to project show. Project planning is a big part of our podcast. I, it is. <laughs> uh, what did somebody say? Like, buying yarn and using yarn are two different hobbies, but also planning your upcoming projects and then actively getting to them are almost two different I hobbies. Think, I absolutely think so. <laughs> like, I spend so much time thinking about planning for prepping projects. No. And then it's like, yeah, but you have, like, these 15 things that need addressed, Devin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what if I just keep scrolling Insta and looking at what else I could do? Exactly. That's my life. So, so I think we have some finishes. I have finishes. I have a finish. So, I'm going to go first. Because I have more. So, I'll show you these. You guys have seen stuff like this before. I finished some more socks. These are super nice. These are, I showed these last time. These are my Sweet Dreams by Bromfields uh, knitted socks. They're tube socks. They have no heel. Um, I made them out of, uh, do I know the yarn? Lion Brand something. <laughs> Not thick and quick. This is like something hometown tweed. Hometown. Hometown tweed in the color Aspen, I think. Yeah, that I sounds have it in right. Book. That sounds right. So this feels, compared to your other socks that you showed us, this feels a little more stable. The it's other just, yarn was a little more floofy and light and, and loose, yeah. and I think it's going to grow. I'm worried about that, but yeah, these, and I, I think I knit these a little tighter too. Yeah, they're a nice part. Um, but they do stretch like. Oh um, yeah, they're good. They're going to fit nicely. Yeah. So these are another late Christmas gift because that's my jam. Um, they were fun to work on. I really like this pattern. It's quick. Um, and I just, they're kind of like my go-to knit. I actually had to go to the laundromat this week and I knit on these at the laundromat. Yeah. Oh, I hate having to go to the laundromat. Uh, our water, we have a water saga. <laughs> Lauren's got a basin saga. We have a water saga. So our quality of water is so bad. The water is orange. Like when you think dirty iron water, it is like the dirtiest <laughs> Um, and we have a water filtration system that, uh, it basically is like fancy sand, as I understand it. And then there's some chemicals that turn iron into solids. All of that has failed and the whole system needs replaced. So in the meantime, I'm going to the laundromat guys. Yeah. Getting some knitting done. But yeah. I mean, we have to sit and hang out. <laughs> Why not? So that's one finish. Do your other little one real quick. Okay. Another little finish. Yeah, I'll do mine. Um, well, I have one that's not here. Do you want me to do that or this? Oh yeah, you have one that's not. Do yours all. Do all. I'll of do yours all my finish. finishes. Okay, okay I'll do mine. So uh, my other finish is here. Um, you guys saw in our previous episode that I started the tulip lace hat, which was also a late Christmas gift, and I bang that hat right yeah. out. Yeah, like it went so quick. It's a um lace hat pattern it's super cute um we'll insert a picture of what it's supposed to look like and what it does look like boop, boop, boop. maybe side by side i don't side know what side. i'll do when i get there yeah future lauren problems <laughs> so uh that hat was really cool and it was very well received uh, i took Did you it like it yes because i know you were kind of worried that the black wasn't going to be as uh, she wanted a sparkle yarn and i had a sparkle yarn but it was too high of a weight so I couldn't quite get gauge with it. So I ended up using a shinier black yarn. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't matte. And I think that's what she didn't want was matte. Yeah. So because I used the shiny one, I think she really liked that. That's awesome. Um, and then I have one more finish. Go for this it. This is a little guy. You guys. I made a dishy. This is a little dishcloth. So um, this is another late Christmas gift. I don't know why it's late because it, I think it took me like two and a half three hours to make this <laughs> so, like why didn't they make this in time i don't know um 
Jason's because you're a dork. Jason's dad's fiance loves my knitted dishcloths, and so she always asks me to knit her one. So I did. Um, I won't see her until next weekend, so that's why it gets to be featured here. This is by. You know, I turned the page. Hang on, I know the pattern. Corrugated, um, corrugated cloth, and it is by Kate Shoren. And what happened when I was knitting this, because you'll see when I hold this up, like, my, it's not really a pattern, like, you just, I got you started a pattern, then you were like, I got I, it, I just go. The, the pattern is really easy, and it's free on Ravelry, but I was watching TV, and I made a mistake in it, but it's a dishcloth. Yeah. And okay. it's literally just purled and knit ridges, purl ridges with knit, knit um, valleys, I guess. And so sometimes I purled three or purled two rows when I should have knit a row or something. And it really just adds more texture to the dishcloth. And this yarn is fun yarn. This is art. How do I say that? Artisanal. Help me. Help Artisanal me English. Yarns. Artisanal yarns. I found them at Rhinebeck in 2019. And they have a Facebook group. So you can go to their Facebook page and look at this. This is a um, really cool, I don't know if the color is being picked up. Yeah, it's pretty. It's like um, a sage green. It's a sage green, but then it has this like thread in it that kind of gives it a little extra scrubby appeal for a dishcloth. It's just really nice cotton yarn. I enjoy working with this so much over like the peaches and cream stuff. Yeah, peaches and cream can be a little rough on them. It's rough on your hands. You feel it. This, I, I knit it so quick and it was fine. Um, That's awesome. So that was my, those are my three finishes. They're all well, little things. getting some of your little Christmas gifty stuff done. In January? Ah, that be better, than, like, better than June. Like, yeah. That's me, you're, what are you doing? I'm trying to kick, like, I'm trying to kick 2020 in the butt yeah. in 2021 by, like, getting rid of all my baggage. I'm trying not to bear the weight of gift knitting all the way through 2021 and, like, Feeling regret or yes, guilt or I whatever. Agree I agree with this. So, trying to get it all done, and I'm doing pretty good. Yeah. So. Yeah, you're making great progress. Uh, so my finish, we're gonna have, we're gonna experiment to see if we can bring it out here. <laughs> so this is so pretty. Look this at this. This is my yoga Look mat. This. <laughs> this is her finish. And inside, oh, there's we're gonna pins. see. Yeah. I'm so die. unroll this carefully. We're gonna see if we can un watch that pin right there. Mm, yeah, I see that. That's the end though. Alright. Alright. Yeah, there we go. There we go. It's all pinned out so you can kind of see it a little better. Uh I can't see the camera. <laughs> That's alright. We're good. I'm putting it in the thing. So this is uh it is so Two much lips. bigger than I thought it was gonna yeah, be. Yeah, it's a little too big. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I've got ideas, I got ideas. Uh so this is tulips by Tamara Ganja. I'll link the pattern down below. It's uh, free on Ravelry. It's a great pattern. Fantastic. I've been working on it, and so now it's pretty. done. You guys. And you can see all each individual tulip. It's like there's a tulip, and each one has a leaf, and it's 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 really pretty. The center is my favorite part. So um, it is gorgeous. It is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. I made two mistakes that I found when blocking. One of which I can totally fix. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix that. Um, I wove in all my ends, blocked it, and then now you can see it kind of got like an end that needs clipped off. Um, but uh, it is about three inches too big for oh, my no. quilter's hoop that I plan to mount it in. So I have two options. One, I can, when I'm, let me set this down now just to kind of get it out of the way. No, 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 more. There we go. There we go. <laughs> um, so I can either, when I'm lacing it up around the hoop, pull those to the back, mm -mm. or I can possibly starch them out around the outside of the hoop, so it'll be like an extra two inches around the hoop, uh, framing that could it. Look cool. I think that's what I'm going to go for. So like they'll be straight on the wall, like they'll be. Up yeah, the they'll wall. be flat against the wall around the hoop. That could look then, really cool. Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna end up doing because I don't want to hide them. Like it would yeah. work, and it's, it looks so pretty. It is very pretty. So um, I will hopefully, when I'm editing this, 
insert a picture of it completely mounted with braces on it. So Ooh. if there's not one here, it's because I'm lazy. But if there is one here, I'm doing good. You got it. So uh, the uh, but I'm hoping to have that up on the wall. I've kind of picked where I want to put it. Now that it's going to be an extra four inches on either side, I might have to rearrange some stuff on my wall. Um, but it's going to go up there. And it is so cool. Yeah, that it's going to awesome. be great. It, it, it was a super fun pattern. It was, it was, the yarn I was using, the thread I was using was a little frustrating, but the pattern itself was never frustrating. Mm -hmm. It was always fun to work on. I always felt like I was making good progress whenever I worked on it. So it's not one of those slog things where you're just like, oh my gosh, can I make another row of single crochets? Good God. <laughs> um, but I'm super happy to have it done. It's going to look great. I'm pleased with it. It is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. So that's my big, like, whip finishes update. Uh, everything else, I made progress on both my inmost cardigan and my temperature blanket, but it's, you can't even tell, like, because the inmost cardigan is just a sheet, and the temperature blanket is also just a sheet. So, <laughs> uh, when I reach the end of a month for the temperature blanket, I'll probably give an update. Yeah, I think that would be good. Yep. I have two whips. <laughs> do, do, do. So, you guys, I've been a knit machine. I just poked myself with a <laughs> pin. I've made poor decisions. Lauren's stabbing herself over there. I'm boo booed myself. <laughs> I have. But yeah. Oh, yeah. Yo. Holy moly. Right? <laughs> so let me hold this up. <gasps> it's like caffeinated. So, where is my little girl? When you said. Like, the middle of the sweater just goes. You were not kidding. So, where the little stitch marker is, that's where I was for our last podcast two weeks ago, guys. This is... So, the sleeves were finished. Don't think I knit these sleeves in two weeks. Yeah. But the body... Look at that. Two Good weeks. Good God. This has been why I have no cross-stitch updates. <laughs> this has been... Understandable. This, this has been fun. I'm really enjoying it. I'm on, I'm obviously attached to the sleeves. Um, so what yeah, you do now, what's going on with these sleeves. so you leave this open till the end. So this little armpit hole will just stay here. Mm -hmm. And at the end you, I think you kitchener them shut. Okay. So right now I'm is, I mean, doing, that comes together so beautifully. Yeah. She has, she has it planned in the project so that you're, when you're doing your, decreases they don't like offset the pattern mm -hmm. which is really nice um so my little my little attachments there um it's right now i'm doing the raglan decreases with neck decreases so your neck decreases only happen at the beginning of beginning and end of your round so right here your raglan decreases on either side, on either side of your sleeve where it attaches to the sweater, there's two decreases on either side of the stitch markers here. So there's two here, there's two here, two here, two here. So you do, some rows are plain knit, some rows are decreases, and you just do a whole bunch of that. Um, up to your neck. Up to your neck. And apparently you go all the way until like your neck hole is like this big. Oh and yeah, because you're going to stick it. Because you cut it. So that's just got to sit like here and there is a collar that goes with this so as much progress as I've made it's far from done because I've still got to get all the way to the end of these decreases which I didn't bring the pattern but I'm more than halfway through the decreases and then you then I've got to cut it and knit the collar and knit the belt knit the belt loops so there's a whole lot of finishing that goes with this guy but well, he's coming along so good. I've tried this on. Um, I am excited to say that I knew the body wasn't going to be a fit problem. I was a little worried about the sleeves because I've always said I got the beef cakes. Ooh, my beefy arms. Um, and I tried the sleeves on and so far, like, no fit issues. It nice. feels good. Um, oh, and where this stitch marker is. So when you attach the sleeves, this is where my sleeves had ended when I knit them before. And since I attached them, I've added this much to them. Ah, I was going to ask about that because there's a, a moment where your color changes a little. 
Yeah. Because you're fading up in one uh, when you're making your sleeves, and then it's you came because, in with a different fade. Yeah, it's because, uh, especially on this sleeve, you can yeah, see the, the color change a little more. But and it's still not, it's it's still a very subtle shift. Like, yeah. This yarn was the perfect yarn to pick for this, yeah. I think. And that's just because I didn't cut that, I could have cut that lighter section out, but it doesn't look too bad against this sleeve. No, no. So I think it looks great. I'm pretty happy with this. And it feels like it's going to be so snuggly. It is a snuggly. Like, oh my gosh. I'm, I'm almost so like happy. sad you're going to cut it because it just looks so snuggly as it is. But she, as a cardigan, it'll be really nice. It'll be really cool. And she does have this pattern as a sweater now. As a pullover. So you could do that. I'm not going to because that bottom chart felt like it was forever. It's only 29 rows, but it felt like it was forever. And that... I just don't want to do that again. No. I don't think... Like, You're going to have it once. You don't need it a second yeah, time. I, I'm going to take my time before I do another full color work all over garment. Yeah. Um, especially with sweater garment. Like a shawl or mittens or something that's a little more bearable. But that's my big progress. And then I have one more. What else you got? <laughs> There's also a ton of progress on this. Oh my gosh, this is the one I love. I'm going to steal this pattern from you when you're done. This is my knit machine. This is. So, it's in my cute little gnomey bag. We love gnomes here. We and appreciate then, a gnome. So this is, I did bring. So this is what it's going to look like. So there's the I hat. love this hat. I love this hat. This is called Love is Love Actually. And it is by the High Fiber Shop. And this is mine. Oh my gosh, it's coming along so beautifully. And actually, I think I'm going to hold it upside down just because you can kind of see yeah. a little better. Let me stretch it down. Like, you see I, the hearts. Like, that is so beautiful. This is the start of the big heart right yeah. here. It is and coming along looking. so wonderfully. Great. And it's super soft, and it fits, like, hey, this is, I do this all the time, and Jason's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, just making sure my hat's good. Just making sure yeah. it fits the noggin. Yeah. I love, I love your color choices, and I love this pattern. I think it's such a fun pattern, like you said, for the season, for winter. It it's is great. a lot of fun to do this pattern. Um... <laughs> I'm all caught up. Oh, and this, I'm trying to stitch marker thing. So this is where her progress keeper. So this is where it was last time I showed you. Oh my gosh, look at that. So I did all that. Especially in color work, like that's significant progress. Mm -hmm. That's um, so amazing. I told you, I think I told you I, I like to work with a table. Mm -hmm. Well, we got like a little tea dinner type table at Walmart. And I just set my pattern up there and then I work on this. And it's so much easier especially with this color work stuff to work with the table in front of me and I also use the table when I'm working on the sweater because the sweater is so much bulk right now right it's so heavy that um to hold it in my lap it's like wearing out my arms but I plop that sucker on the table and then I don't have to bear weight yeah absolutely but yeah this hat is coming along great super happy with it and the the red yarn here has cashmere in it they're both uh, leftovers from other projects mm-hmm it's soft as, like, ooh, dreamy soft. It is super soft. I'm excited for this hat. Yes. Can't wait for it. And I've shown this before, but I'll show it again. It's going to have pom-pom. It's going to have pom-pom. Oh, pom-pom the right way. So this is going to be That's my little... That's super cute. My bag's going to fall. I got it for you. There you go, pom-pom. So, it's my... This is my Valentine's Day project. Because, I don't know... And apparently I love Valentine's Day, and I didn't know it. Yeah. Um, I have knit my other full color work hat that I knit was a Valentine's Day pattern, and it was designed by Donna Frost. Donna I think Frost. you do love Valentine's and Day. And she, um, it's it's called The Lovebirds, and my other pattern. Oh, it's, and I wear it all the time. I just wore it yesterday to dinner. The, uh, so. I think it's one... As we've discussed, Devin is a pink person, and of course Valentine's Day, all the things appeal to you because it's your colors. You're yes. like, instantly a pattern is better because it's in pink. Because it's in pink. But yeah. also, like, you made me heart 
ornaments for Christmas. Mm -hmm. Like, you're just a, such a lovely person. Like, <laughs> Valentine's Day is a perfect holiday for you. Yes, it is. It is. I'm, I'm really loving both of my projects right now. They're all I want to work on. Um, and, yeah. Trying to balance those out, though, with a little bit of the uh, Christmas gifty yeah. thing yeah. That's, that's still lingering cool. through. Hopefully, I'm lingering, but not forever. Not forever. The end is in sight. So yes, exactly. Yeah, and then that's all I have for finishes. I don't have any whips, but I have a plan. Those were, you just talked oh. to two, about two whips. I don't know what I'm saying. I have a plan as well. I plan. Go. 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 Okay. So I am planning to start <laughs> talking about you saying like I need to take a break from a full color work sweater. I'm about to start a full color work sweater. Uh, so I'll put a picture here of the pattern I'm about to start. It is called Cranebo, I think is how you say it, uh, by Elena uh, Fedotova. Uh, she is um, uh, on Ravelry, and it's, I think her pattern is not much. It's like eight bucks, I think. Um, but you bought me this beautiful yarn, so let me grab my yarn. Ah, in my bag. Watch your head on the light. Watch your head on the light. <laughs> Watch the cord of the light. <laughs> So you bought me this beautiful yarn for Christmas, Did you? Um, and I was looking for a pattern that I thought would accentuate the beautiful colors of this yarn and get to use it. Um, but finding a worsted weight crochet colorwork sweater is not the easiest thing in the world, and I was pretty shocked at that. Um, I looked at a couple that were more stripes like full like you literally create block stripes so i was like okay that could be fun um but then i found this one the uh what did i just say <laughs> cranebo and it is a much more subtle stripe and it's textured so your um base color which i chose this very nice navy uh to go with it and i thought and this will kind of peek through ridges of this, and it'll go all the way up. It's also a nice slouchy sweater, which is something I quite like. Um, and uh, it was a pain in the wampus finding a yarn that was both similar in feel. Like, I didn't want to scratch your yarn, and I didn't want something that was um, too, like, I was going to have to double hold or anything to get the right thickness. And I'm pretty pleased with those, two. They're going to be great I think they together. look great. Yeah, I love so, them. And for my first kind of like color work sweater, I'm gonna see if we can get all these back in this bag. <laughs> you need a bigger bag. I need a bigger bag. The uh, for my first color work sweater, I think it's gonna be a super fun project, and I'm gonna have something bright and fun mm -hmm. and in my colors at the end. So yes, I'm really excited to start that. I probably I may have it started by our next podcast, but I'm trying. I've really neglected my blanket. So I'm going to try and make significant progress on my blanket. So this might be the week after. Just yeah. because I'm going to try and get something done on something else before I start a new <laughs> one. So anyway. So that's my upcoming project. So I have two upcoming projects. Um, one is a... I talked about this last time. Um, in that I talked about the finish it or frog it sort of going through my whips which I kind of felt this pressure that I had a whole lot of whips I have five that's really not that that's bad. Really not bad but I wanted to go through them and just decide like what am I doing with you so I didn't put needle stuff so what is your uh what what are your five whips before we get into oh this? gosh I don't remember them all but okay. I have a headband a scarf a shawl this and something I'm forgetting so you I'll did go, finally put your sister's hood on though. Yes, I did put I that was one That's of them. That's one of them. Um so I have a variety of types of rugs. I also think there's a little stuffy, it's a little stuffed animal stuff thing. Mm -hmm. Um so there's a variety of different things and um there's only one that I put it down because I hated it. Uh that was that one I'll talk about when I show it later. Um, but for now, I'll show you this one. Yeah. This is coming back in my regular rotation of things to be worked on. And this is the top. So this is my love note. That is literally, everybody says it's like one of the fastest knit sweaters. <laughs> 
and I'm I'm like oh I'll just put it aside for like six months so um, now I'm gonna be bringing it back out and working on it I did make some modifications to it that oh yeah that's I twice. was struggling with because I think I cast on for a size down from what I needed because everybody said it was big and I don't love all the positive ease either um, because positive ease on me, I feel like it often makes me look just like way fatter than I really am, and I don't like that. Yeah, positive ease can, can end up looking like you're wearing like a bag, big, a big bulky thing. So I sized down, but then the size down needed bigger arms, so I made modifications to adjust for that because my beefcakes. But um, I didn't finish going through and and stitching all of the modifications in, but I left really good notes in my journal of where I left off. So I don't think I'm going to have to frog this, but I'll keep you guys posted. Yeah. And so this yarn is not showing up as well in this light there. Maybe if I tilt it this way. I kind of pull it back a little bit. Pull back. Like there, we go. there we go. It's this beautiful, like pastel -y, super spring looking. Yeah, it's beautiful. And if you're talking about knitting for the season, this is perfect. This it's is perfect. Floofy, colorful, pastel -y yes. sweater. I don't, I don't think I said who this is by. This is by Tin Can Knits. Oh and yeah, which is the same people that did your other sweater, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you already know you like they're, their designs. They're really good pattern designers. Um, my modifications have nothing to do with their design. More than, like, I picked a sweater out that has 10 inches of positive ease, knowing that I'm not a person who likes that much ease. And then just trying to modify it. <laughs> so I am going to be working on that. And I did bring, here's what the yarn looks like. I love like. this yarn. I love this yarn. So this, is, it's fingering weight held with mohair. I think I have some of the mohair in here. Mohair, where'd you go? Here's the mohair. And they're Chalk. dry in the same, same colorway, right? They're the same colorway, yeah. The, it's called Petals. And it is, this one is really hard to say. It's, it honestly, in the ball, looks so gray and purple. Yeah. But um, there's, you can see the highlights of greens and blues yeah. if you look up close. But when you're just looking from far away, you're like, that's a gray ball. It does look gray, but it's not knitting gray. So it is going to be really pretty when I'm finished. And I plan on wearing it over some of my uh, dresses. That's yeah, that'll be really cute. Something that's coming it. back in my rotation. Awesome possum. Then I have one more, which got buried. Oh, no. Reach. Okay. So I also, at the beginning of the year, uh, talked about my Instagram Make 9, which I do plan on doing a sort of separate video um, that I'm going to show all the projects together with. But I thought I'd talk about this here since I got the yarn ready, printed the pattern and everything. I'm going to make some mittens. Those are super cute. And They're super cute. I'm going to do them in my colors. These are leftover stash yarns, which is a added bonus. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, they looks very similar to what you're doing the hat in. I know, right? <laughs> it's <the> colors. <laughs> uh, these are actually leftover. These two pinks are leftover from a Find Your Fade shawl, the one I knit for Cheryl. Mm -hmm. um, so these will be, uh, let's see. On the pattern, the yellow is going to be this guy. Or no, no, no. The blue is going to be this guy. Okay, that makes more sense. The yellow is going to be this, and then the white's the white. The white's the white, yeah. Yeah. That will be so pretty. Which I cannot, I have two skeins of this, and I don't know, I don't remember if this is enough yardage in this one skein, but I'll figure it out. I can't find the other skein, but I'll figure it out. I love the Fair Isle style. Like, this is so fun. These are traditional, like, um, it's called Selbu Mittens. Norwegian mm. selbu mittens. It's like a, a fancy dancy style and I'm really excited to try them. And this pattern is by Isolde Teague, which I don't think it says on here, but it is by Isolde Teague. I started this pattern before with these yarns and my needles broke and then I kind of frogged it and then now I'm gonna try again with I'm going to use the same method that I've been using to knit everything, which is two, using two um, 
two needles at the same time instead of instead of magic loop and instead of double points I'm gonna do like I do my socks or the sleeves of my sweater yeah now you've learned that you're like man anything that's pairs yeah just throw on there I really think I'll make both mittens if I just work on them at the same time although I will tell you two at a time in color work is a bitch <laughs> but I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do it hey so. My that's plans. how we learn and grow our skills. Yeah. So those are those are my whips and upcoming projects. There's one more thing I wanted to talk about, which was the new to you make along. Yeah. Um, we mentioned in our last podcast. I forgot to bring my kits again that I plan on doing, but I did find out it's called Nano Felting, and I think I was saying Nuno. Oh, it's it's Nano. Nano Felting. Oh. Yeah. And it's the silk scarf, with, which you get wet, and you put the wool on, and then you roll it up around a pool noodle, and you go, Hoo! Did you just almost punch yourself in the face? No, I'm just laughing at myself, because you just, you apparently roll this thing, and the directions say 200 times, and then 200 more times. And you got to make sure you're rolling it all the way around, not just back and forth in one spot. I read through all the directions, and I was like, I'm going to need, like, time and space for this like I yeah. thought it would be a little faster but I'm gonna try it I do have to get bubble wrap for my project so what um, projects is you need pool noodles you have a pool noodle I have pool noodles okay I use pool noodles for planting I cut them up and put oh, them in the bottom right. of my planters so I don't end up having to fill my planters full of dirt yes yeah. or gravel which is heavy yeah I don't but do anyway. gravel <laughs> anyway uh that's just like Way more intensive than I thought. Like, yeah, I thought you were just gonna sit at the table and like punch in some wool through a felt through a scarf. No, it's wet felting. It's, yeah, and it's wet felting and it's bubble wrap and it's pool noodles and it's two hundred yeah. times and then two hundred more yeah. times. Yeah. Um, it's really interesting. I've watched a couple YouTube videos of people doing it. It looks really cool. Um, I definitely think it's gonna be something that I hang up on my wall more than I wear. But we'll see when I'm done. Yeah. It's, it's going to be fun. Yeah, it sounds really neat. So, that's what I'll be doing for the New to You Make Along. Yes. Which is hosted by many, many people, but started by Cocktail Hour at the Coop. Yes. So. Well, I haven't started mine yet, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start my crafty class probably here, probably in the next couple weeks. So. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I'll have something to show people next <laughs> time. Um, but other than that, anything else going on? I think... I'll check my book. I think that was everything I had. I don't have anything crazy. Oh, there's, no a, there's a crochet along that I wanted to talk about. Ooh. I don't know if I'm going to do it, guys, but I'm very tempted. I might need to say no to something. <laughs> but it's the uh, Dreamy Lattice. Oh, this thing you showed me. I almost um, I almost joined. I don't even wear shawls. And I almost joined. This thing is so cool. If you want to join and make me the shawl. <laughs> you buy the yarn. Um, I found some yarn. I'm I want to use the, it's Sheep G's Whirl and Whirlette. Oh yeah. They make these, these yarns that pair perfectly together. And one of them is very similar to the fade type that I used to make the blue crochet shawl that I did, mm -hmm. um, in one of our previous episodes. And that, that's the rainy day shawl I knit in that beautiful blue fade. And then these guy this company makes a solid that pairs perfectly with their fade. Right. So I really like that idea. Yeah, they have, they, uh, so I'll put a picture here of the, of the, the pattern. The, the shawl you're going to get at the end. The, it's uh, by, the Dreamy Lattice uh, thing. Uh, Miho crochet, crochet. Miho Crochet. And it is uh, beautiful. And they, one, I'm glad you said Sheep Jeez. I don't know if that's right. Okay, because every time I read it, I'm like, sheepies, 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 sheepies. Like, what is this? It's words. I see it all the time, but I've never I heard see it. I'm, I'm just saying sheepies. All right. Uh, so, um, they recommend some yarns to go with it, and it is, it's beautiful. And I, and if you want to get me the yarn, I will do it for you because I've wanted to do it. <laughs> the, uh, I'll totally buy the yarn if you crochet me a shawl. Yeah. I mean. So. But, uh, yeah, so there's some fun stuff out there. Uh, so come hang out with us on Instagram again, because that's where we're going to be posting our projects and stuff that we're doing. Absolutely. That's everything I have now. That's, that's all of my things. Have. No acquisitions this time. No, nah, we're, we're cheap. Yeah. Broke. You, you had I'm some. putting flooring in my basement. Mm, you did have some. I did have some. 
but uh, hopefully, and then after I get this uh, this sweater done, I have another one that I want to do with the um, the Toad Familiar that you oh, got yeah. me, which is a fingering weight, which is again, also like a lot of crochet sweaters are DK weight, like to have a worsted weight sweater or a fingering weight sweater is not as common. So a lot of sweaters are DK huh. weight, which I was like, I didn't know that. Well, I think That's in, interesting. I think in knitting, it's really, I see a lot of worsted weight and fingering. I don't, I don't see very many sport. I do see some DK. And a lot of the fingering ones that are coming out now are fingering held with mohair, which means you can usually use a DK for that Right, pattern. right. Cause you're, yeah. But straight up DK patterns, I just, I see worsted weight and fingering weight way more. I think that's so funny that there's, uh, there must be a benefit to it versus, yeah. you know, different, I have no different idea. techniques. I don't know. Sometimes I talk about things that I know nothing about. This is one of those things I know nothing about. <laughs> you know nothing. Well, guys, that's all we have for you today. Come back in two weeks and hang Absolutely. out with us again and come see what our crazy projects look like. Um, <laughs> if you comment down below with what you're working on, we'd love to hear it or follow us on social media so we can see what you're working on. We'd really love to see it. Absolutely. So, Perfect. Well, we'll see you guys at the end of the month. The end of the month. Bye, Bye. guys.